welcome rahul ji you can take on take the class um okay and make us wiser okay so according according to some questions asked uh, in the last session i am i am starting with one topic which we can say types of music especially indian music so if we can think about types of indian music we have four types one is pure classical semi classical light music and folk music like this we can understand this four categories of music in general classical music pure classical music semi classical music light music and folk music if we see this in uh, hindi pure classical means shuddh shastriya sangeet semi classical means up shastriya sangeet light music sugam sangeet and folk is lok sangeet so as we discussed yesterday in pure classical music is actually a rag sangeet generally in india when we say classical music we always sing a rag so classical pure classical means we have to take one rag and then we have to sing whatever song in it and then we have to elaborate the rag this is all about pure classical music so uh, now when we say semi classical music we can understand it two ways semi classical means where uh, uh, the rag is a very uh, specific thing rag is bound with rules so in pure classical music when you are singing some rag you can't go out of rag you have to maintain the rag with all its rules but in general we can say semi means we can go out of rag so that is how we can understand semi classical but actually if we see the particular songs with uh, type of songs which are sung in semi classical that we have to understand so uh, first uh, we will understand that in pure classical generally what we sing is called khyal and dhrupad these two things are generally sung in pure classical music in hindustani khyal type of songs and dhrupad type of songs similarly when we talk about semi classical music it is a one very unique form of music form of singing which is called thumri thumri so in general whole semi classical music can be called thumri style thumri so in thumri style there are many other uh, type of songs like dadra kajri chaiti ghori jhula and one another kind is tappa thumri dadra kajri chaiti jhula ghori and tappa so this uh, these songs generally are a thumri style all these songs thumri dadra kajri chaiti ghori jhula these are typical this is a typical way of singing it's a semi classical semi classical means what the ragas which are used in this type of songs can be mixed can uh, we can uh, mix other notes out of raga little bit they are not very pure type of ragas mixed type of ragas so the ragas which are used in pure classical are different rags and the rags which are used in semi classical are different rags and the way of singing of khyal and dhrupad which is in pure classical and way of singing of thumri dadra and the uh, the last thing i wrote is tappa tappa is also very typical type of singing and the semi classical singing is a, like a mix of classical and folk little bit folk element is there in that but mainly it is very classical uh, 
means based on rag and the rendition is very classical type but obviously it is a semi classical so thals used are also different in a classical pure classical music different thals are used in semi classical music different thals are used so just little bit and then we go to light music so light music we know everything first we can say that in general film music is a light music so light means what light to listen and also light to sing that way we can understand light music so uh, like to to understand and to to perform and to understand classical music you have to learn classical music otherwise you can't enjoy classical music similarly you can say about semi classical also but light music is such a form that though you don't know much about music just you enjoy it so that is a light because it's a light it's not very complicated type of music so uh, generally we like film music because it's Uh, light music we call it sugam sangeet sugam means many people like it like that so in film uh, music we can see that uh, we can uh, include patriotic songs or uh, bhajans or any other kind of songs uh, love songs sad songs so this is light music and folk music as you all know folk music in the different regions as we are talking about uh, india and mainly north india then uh, gujarat has its own uh, music called garba rajasthan has mand punjab has bhangra maharashtra has lawni there are many other i am just saying one one type uh, bengal has baul so this you can see little bit these are the types of folk music some are like folk dances also like garba is also folk folk singing and folk dancing lawni also is like that folk music folk singing and folk dancing and uh, baul is folk singing bhangra again singing and dancing mand is mainly singing rajasthani mand so now uh, one thing uh, is very interesting about this four forms of music these are different types of songs which are sung in these four types now what is interesting is that the uh, use of music and lyrics keeps changing in this huh? now you see when we uh, sing uh, when we think about a uh, singing specially music as a singing as you know that uh, there can be a two types of music instrumental and singing so singing is more popular as you all know so why singing is more popular because singing has lyrics words language and its words lyrics are there in instrumental you know instrumental music is considered pure music because it's only one art that is music while when we say about singing singing is not one art actually singing is not only music it is a combination of two arts poetry and singing poetry and music singing is such a form that not only we are using music musical elements but we are using poetry so that's why singing is in general more popular because when lyrics gets involved then meaning comes and with meaning feelings come so that's why generally we like singing more in what or kind of music either it is classical semi classical light music or folk music we enjoy singing more than the instrumental instrumental also is a means many people like instrumental it's a pure music and you can imagine just uh, just by listening to the melody you can have some feeling that is also music has capacity to create feeling in a listener's mind without words also but when you get support of lyrics and you sing then it creates more emotion so that's why in general we like singing more so when we talk about these four categories we have to understand that in the pure classical music lyrics is least important the basic elements of music which are sur and tal these are more important in the first type of music pure classical lyrics are not much important 
permutations and combinations of sur and tal timing and sound and different emotions created through the pure music and lyrics are there but less important then it is called pure classical i am talking about singing if it is in instrumental then no question of lyrics but if we think in the terms of singing then the pure classical music lyrics are least important then when we go to semi classical music music little bit dilutes the rag rag little bit dilutes it can be little impure but lyrics gets more value little more value than the pure classical music and uh, there are some words folk folk type of some words and then they have some meanings and the elaboration is done according to the lyrics like in pure classical music elaboration is done without any connection with the lyrics but in semi classical music elaboration is done same like classical music in semi classical music also elaboration is done spontaneous elaboration spontaneous elaboration is a very unique quality of indian music especially in these two forms classical and semi classical spontaneous creativity imagination and elaboration of rag that is classical and semi classical so as we go to semi classical lyrics get little more value now when we go to light music then as we know that in light music when we enjoy film songs so not only because of the very beautiful melodies of film music but also because of beautiful lyrics in it and the meaning related to it and uh, how the singer is rendering it how feeling is created so both comes together music which is not very complicated very melodious but not complicated and some beautiful lyrics which we understand and we get the feeling overall feeling which is created through both together music and poetry so th that's why it is called light because it is more enjoyable to the common people light to understand light to even perform and when uh, the fourth category we see folk music in that it is such that music element little is less musical element is less some one one same tune keeps repeating but lyrics keeps changing there are too many lyrics and this lyrics keeps uh, conveying feelings of the local people local problems or local society but only one tune keeps repeating there are not many different different permutation combinations of notes so music uh, has little less value and uh, more most value uh, uh, lyrics gets in folk music so like this if we see these four categories we can see like this only music very less lyrics little more value lyrics get and uh, of course uh, musical element is more then music and lyrics is in balance in light and in, in folk music is very less and lyrics is most important okay so uh, this i wanted to say about this topic and any question regarding this yeah, if someone I, yeah where does it where do where do you put the ghazal in it which is which category yeah, so yeah so interesting question now some forms are such can they can be in uh, two categories like uh, ghazal uh, basically is not any uh, musical form ghazal is basically a poetry form form of poetry so the, this form of poetry when uh, people started singing it then uh, uh, in the previous times uh, people started singing in in semi classical style thumri style later some other ghazal singers came and then they started singing it little in lighter version so then it it came in light music so but still if you see ghazal is considered little bit semi classical it's not very light like film music or there is some simple bhajan or simple song it's not very simple it is little difficult because it has some elements of classical music in it so it can be considered in uh, semi classical but if you listen to jagjit singh and pankaj das then you may think that it is much lighter do uh, if you uh, listen to jagjit singh it appears that it is it is light but actually it is very difficult it's not so much easy to sing ghazal generally 
So ghazal comes in, under both categories, light and semi-classical. Yeah, when I understand that ghazal has, ghazal has its own, um, you can have one class talking about ghazal and how they are written and how all these poets and I'm yes, learning yes. See, ma, now. So, just I will, I will, I would like to share that basically I love to sing ghazals. Means I am, I like to call myself a ghazal singer. So, because I too much, I like to sing ghazals. And uh, from childhood, I have been in ghazal singing. So, ghazal is a very big topic for me and I can take we can uh, pick up another many another sessions day. on ghazals. Kind of yeah. yes. <laughs> Only ghazal so, I can explain in much detail. Yeah. So, let's... Um, should we, anybody has any questions they can any ask anyone them. has any question regarding this topic which i explained just now sir yeah when we talk about like, mishra rag what do we understand by mishra rag mishra, mishra rag means same it it, it, it uh, like in, it becomes uh, semi classical do we understand yes that? yes exactly it becomes semi classical mishra rag okay. generally in tumri style mishra ragas Raga itself is a mixed rag, like uh, rag Dhairvi, rag Kafi, rag Khamaj. They itself are like a Mishra rag. They are called Chanchal ragas. So there are two categories of ragas, Gambhir ragas and Chanchal ragas. So generally Gambhir ragas are sung in pure classical and Chanchal ragas are sung in semi-classical style. So this uh, uh, semi-classical, this ragas itself are, their nature is Chanchal, means they are they can be mixed there and there. Other notes can be used in them. Like if you see Bhairvi, or Bhairvi uses all 12 notes. Yeah. Okay, thank Did you. Any, any ex ex example? Can you show a little bit of what those two different, how? Okay. So yesterday I uh, gave example of classical, pure classical I sang. So little bit I'm trying to give you an example of uh, Thumri. So Tumri, as I said, it can be sung in a semi-classical, uh, sorry, chanchal rag. So one chanchal rag is pahadi, rag pahadi. So rag pahadi is, generally you will not find pure classical in rag pahadi. Rag pahadi is specially meant for Tumri, semi-classical music. <laughs> Are used. 
almost all 12 notes are used like this in rag pahadi same like rag bhairavi also uses like that so that's why it is semi classical thank you any question anyone has a, uh, it's not that you can ask question only based on the topic which we are discussing you can ask any question and depending on that i will Uh, tell you the next topic. With okay, the two things you. that yesterday I was asked, yes. we need to discuss. One is the scale. How you on, understand your range with you right. within your okay. range? What scale to take for a song? And also right. uh, talk to um and the sum, the concept of sum. I think right. those two uh, questions okay. were there. Already. So well, first, I will explain concept of sum. So concept of sum. as i uh, told yesterday when you understand the definition of tal then you understand what is sum so tal is a repetition of particular number of beats suppose we are repeating four beats 1 2 three, 4 and we'll keep repeating 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 And all in between all beats, there are there is same time as I explained yesterday. So, uh, tal means repetition of particular number of beats. So here we are repeating four beats. So how we understand that we are repeating four beats because after four we again come back to one. So what happens when we count one, two, three, four? Automatically, automatically some weight comes on the first beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Because we come back to one, that's why this first beat is very important, and that is called sum. So sum means cycle is completed, and again you are starting the cycle. That's why sum gets some weight, and that's why it's very important. Because without sum, you will not understand that how cycle is going. So that that is how sum is very important, and what happens that uh, generally when singer is performing and some other musicians are accompanying especially when with uh, tabla then what happens the cycle of tal goes on in mind of tabla player same as in mind of singer and same as in mind of any other musician so all are abiding by this timing and whatever is the cycle of timing 1 2 3 Four, one, two, three, four. So everyone comes together at one, and they have to. The uh, one is their meeting point. Huh? In in between these four beats, they can play little bit. They can have some fun in between. But at one again, everyone has to come together because that cycle is going on in the mind, huh? according to timing. So that's why some becomes very important and. Uh, we keep playing like singer keeps playing with uh, the cycle ultimately he comes back and then tabla player also comes back to one because the cycle is going on in mind so this this is how fun is created when we come together on some after some some cycles again we show the sum together that is how sum is very interesting concept in uh, especially in indian music because uh, uh, in in whatever beats are there of tal we keep playing with the lay we we play with the time and then again we come back to coincide with each other on some so this creates too much fun in, in uh, indian music so that's why this is how some is important any uh, question about some i hope i have explained it nicely how some is important i, I think it will be interest it will be nice to so in the with the tal you know when you are singing and how you are okay so i will uh, i'll sing one ghazal and then i will try to show hmm? 
So now, just now I have a, I don't have a tabla player. I have the machine of tabla. So this machine will not play. This machine will keep playing the same thing. But I will play with the tal, and then I will go inside with the sum. Uh, like suppose I am singing this ghazal. Ranjishi say, dil hi dukhane ke liye aranjish. So this is sum. Ranjishi say. So I'll sing something again. I'll catch the sum. Cycle of six beats is going on. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Aap se mujhe chhod ke jaane ke liye aare jis ki se a. So you can see every time I give some, so the, I coincide with cycle. I sing something and again I come back to some. Nisa re nisa ni da pa ni da ma pa ga ma pa ni sa aphe aphe se mujhe chhod ke jaane ke liye a. Like this? Very nice. Yeah, I think that's some. Yeah, little bit. I I I could explain because uh, actually without learning it you can't too much realize. But I hope little bit you realize what is some. Thank you. It, excuse me. It appears to be easy, but uh, you have to count. You have to sing. Uh, Uh, all everything at the same time. I mean, six beats. Yes, yes. you are singing right. and yet counting, and yet exactly. uh, how are you exactly. doing managing all that? I mean, yeah. we can't. So you it's see, very difficult. Yeah. That is that we have to learn. Huh? That is about how you learn with practice. Now see uh, why light music is light music because we do don't do any such elaboration and we sing something else and we coincide with some when we we are singing a film song. it is all fixed you don't have to do anything else just whatever the how is the song the same you have to reproduce huh? like suppose i am singing some uh, uh, film song where well, well i will not take any variation or anything same whatever the song is recorded same way i will reproduce it hmm? so the counting that uh, that appears to be a bit tricky counting and singing yeah i'll tell you in in some uh, style of music it seems easy and in some style of music like in classical and semi classical it becomes complicated in light music and in folk music it is easier You, you so have to follow the tabla. Yes, are you listening? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two. Three. Now, what song I will sing? It will very easily go with the this cycle. One, two, three, four. Ek pyaar tha nagma hai, mojo ki rava. Like 
like this is easy to maintain 1 2 3 4 5 6 ek pyar ka nagma hai mojo ki rawani hai so this when tal is little faster it is easier to maintain the cycle but as tal becomes little slow then it become starts become becoming complicated because when it is slow to count that timing in mind becomes little difficult and you see in pure classical music it is a, a khyal system where we sing we sing bada khyal but is too much of slow it is called vilambit tal so vilambit tal is too much slow and then to maintain that tal is very difficult so this is how uh, as i said in folk music folk music you see generally is very fast so in that tal is very easy but as you go to light music then to semi classical then to classical tal keeps becoming more and more difficult so that is how also in terms in terms of tal also you see from classical to folk tal becomes easier music becomes easier but lyrics becomes more intense from classical to folk so musical elements are decreasing in these four types the most complicated is pure classical music then semi classical little less than light little less and folk is most easier musically because uh, uh, the tune is very simple and uh, speed is fast so it's very easy to maintain the cycle of tal but uh, um let's say what's the the, the basic difference between semi classical and classical music what differentiate i already Uh, I already explained that uh, classical. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I missed the first part. I'm sorry, I, okay. I missed the first. Yeah, part. no problem. I'll just say uh, once again <laughs> that uh, classical means uh, you have to maintain rag very purely. Hmm? In semi-classical music, uh, ragas are such that they are mixed type of ragas. You can take some notes out of little rag. You can dilute the rag little bit. That's why it is called semi-classical. Sandhya, I am going to send the recording anyway to everybody. Okay thank okay. you. Any more question about this uh, topic of sum and tal? Then I will move to the topic of scale. Um Rahul ji can you give an example of thumri like the semi classical question was there so if you can sing I I sang one thumri uh, you were there? I was there which one? Uh, Mori chhodo dagariya sham the I which I sang in rag pahadi. Okay okay. This is Tumri style. One more uh, small example I'll give in uh, Tumri. The tapa and what is how is the tapa and other ones different? Yeah, now the songs which are uh, Tumri style. So first uh, songs which I said like Tumri, Dadra, Kajri, Chaiti. These are all Tumri style songs. in which uh, the lyrics are little bit different like hori means uh, it's uh, uh, about hori jhula is about doing jhula in uh, 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 monsoon season in rain rainy season then uh, like chait chaitar mas so uh-huh. about chaitar mas like this and dadra is little bit same type so dadra thumri all these are uh, thumri style but tappa is little different type of semi classical music where it is very typical hmm? and now as i am not very much a singer of tappa but i will try to sing hmm. <laughs> like this small small tanas are sung in tappa style मोदी चोडो डगरिया शान मोदी मोदी मोरी चोडो डगरिया शान chodo chodo dagari ya sham like this so very fast type of singing and playing with tal and rag semi classical style 
Huh? That's great. Thanks, so well. I mean, I never, uh, I was always wondered, wondering about those. What's tapa and all this? So yeah. you're saying that the Tumri style, everything, the, the Kazri and all these things, it's is the best on the some particular uh, rain season or something. Yeah, but lyrics, yeah, lyrics, styles, yeah. Lyrics, right. Okay, okay. Now I got that. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, but uh, Tappa is little different kind of semi classical singing. Yeah. And Thumri, uh, so it is a Thumri style and Tappa style. These main styles you can say in the semi classical style. That's very good. typical to Indian music. Now, Thumri singers, Tappa singers are being very less. Very mm -hmm. few singers are singing these styles. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so now I move to the question of uh, scale. So yesterday I was, I already explained the keys of keyboard. So keyboard is made in such a way that white keys, if we, we take a C, C key as our SA, then all white keys will be Shuddha Swar and all black keys will be uh, Vikrut Swar. Anyway, so uh, if we see the sequence of keys, then like this you can see, this, this is the sequence of keys on keyboard. These are 12 keys. Hmm. If you start from C, C, C sharp, D, D sharp. So all the sharps can also be called flat. So I'm just now I'm writing only in terms of sharp. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and B. And then again, C, and the same sequence starts. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and in between all sharps. So each, this, is, this shows the key of keyboard. So what it indicates that the frequency is increasing. This has some particular frequency. Then this is little increased, little increased, little increased. So one thing is very interesting to understand that when we again reach on upper upper C, and suppose this has 100 hertz frequency, then this will be 200 hertz frequency. So when we move to these 12 nodes, we reach exactly double frequency. Like this. So this is how the frequency is increasing. Keeps increasing and then ultimately becomes double. And when it is double, then all 12 nodes are finished. Then the new cycle starts. New scale, new octave or new subtract starts. So within one frequency to its double frequency, there are these 12 different musical notes or keys. Now, what happens that any of this key we can take as our sa. Now, every song, in, especially in Indian music, every song has a sa. Sa means one reference note. So this is very important to understand that sa means, sa is the first note. Why this first note is called Adharswar? Adharswar means reference note. Reference musical note. Sa is Adharswar. Reference note. So any song has one reference note, which is its sa. Whatever song you are singing, filmy song, bhajan, classical, semi-classical, folk, whatever you are singing, there is one reference point. With reference to this note, there are other 11 notes or whatever notes are used in that particular song. So we have to uh, realize this sa, that where is sa of this particular song. So this sa is a for any key out of these 12 keys, this can be any one key. So any song can have any key. The scale can be anything. Now suppose you are listening to one particular song. Suppose you are uh, listening to Ek Pyar Ka Nagma Hai. So if you see the original song, the sa of that original song is a D. D. If you see on keyboard, if you will play the D note you will uh, and you will play the song, you will realize that this is the sa of this song. This song was recorded in according to the considering D as Sa. Now suppose you are singing, uh, 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 you are listening to the song and you are trying to sing with it, but you find it that it is very high for you. Your your range when it goes in antra high notes, then you are not being able to sing. 
So what can we do? You you can th- you you may think that okay, then I can't sing this song, but it is not like this. What you can do? You can decrease your sa to some lower key. Suppose this D key. So you can lower your key to C sharp. Your sa you can take C sharp, or you can take your sa to C, and then you sing. So it will not uh, when you uh, play the original song, it will uh, uh, it will be in D. But when you are individually you are singing, you can sing it in C or C sharp. Or if you are finding it low, then you can sing in higher scale. So this is called scale. The reference point you can change. But obviously, if you'll change the reference point, then uh, it will not sound same. Means it will not coincide with the original one because you are changing the scale. But the melody you will find same. So I, I'll give you example. Suppose this original in this scale. एक प्यार का नगमा है मौजों की रवानी है इट इज गोइंग लाइक दिस ओरिजिनल नाउ आई डिक्रीज स्केल एंड आई टेक वन की डाउन सी शाप की एक प्यार का नगमा है मौजों की रवानी Uh, suppose this is also higher for me in uh, antra then i can take one more down scale so uh, now i'm taking c scale ek pyar ka nagma hai mojo ki rawani hai so like this i am changing the reference point changing my sa to, i'm lowering my sa to make it comfortable for me huh? so now uh, comfortable for me means what <coughs> that god has given us particular voice which has particular limitations huh? so suppose i can't sing very high but i can sing very much low or or i can sing very high but i can't sing low so this this can be a god gift to my voice like if you listen to jagjit singh you will listen that he sings more down downside he he doesn't go much higher on higher notes and if you listen to the nusrat fateh ali khan he always sings very high so god has given him high range and to jagjit singh god has given him lower range so both are very famous singers so you can't say that with the, these limitations also they have become very famous singers so sing, more, singing good is more important how much is your range that is not important but one thing is there that range doesn't mean only down on or up but range actually means how much down you can go and how much up you can go so this is way if we consider range like this hmm? suppose your range is higher but you can't go low so this is this is little limitation huh, for you and if you are singing low and you can't go high then that that is limitation but if if you have wide range then the limitation is less so we can see that's why lata mangeshwar is considered a great singer or mohammad rafi great because they have wider range they can sing high also very much they can sing low also very much hmm? so that's why uh, if you in general you see playback singers have very good range that's why they have become so much famous singers hmm? while other singers who th- those who have, don't have too much range they sing their type of songs there is some limitation like jagjit singh can't become uh, he couldn't become very good playback singer because he had some limitations he has some very good quality so that quality he used and he created his own songs own ghazals and he sang but he could not uh, become a very good playback singer because playback singer needs to be have a very good range high and lower range so uh, this is how you can understand range so uh, uh, range is basically god gifted but uh, you can increase it little bit by riyaz huh? so by there is some particular riyaz by which you can increase your higher range and you can increase your lower range so th- there are particular kind of riyas which you have to do so whatever god gifted range you have you can increase that in down side and in on upper side so that uh, if any song you want to sing in the original scale of the recorded song filmy song then you can sing then you don't have to change the scale down or up but uh, as i said doing down scale or up scale that is not a point you sing good that is more important in whatever scale you sing but you have to sing good good sur good lay any question
So Rahul ji, you said find the sa in the song. How do you find yes. the sa? Yeah, so this is a little, uh, uh, when you start learning, uh, just you know, by words, I can't explain to you, but I will just give you an example that how you can understand. Like suppose, uh, already I gave this example. Ek pyaar ka nagma hai Zindagi aur kuch bhi nahi Teri meri kahani hai So here I am singing. So size, sa. The reference point is this. Sa. And song is starting from this sa. Sa re ga ek pyaar but not, not necessarily every time song will start from sa. Song can start from any note. But still it has some reference point that you have to realize. You have to understand that melody and you have to find out that reference point. Now suppose I sing some other song. Hmm? So in the end it came to Sa. Sa. So the, this is the reference point. Sa. But song is starting from a higher note. Dha, dha, pa, dha, pa. Starting from Dha. But Na wo samaj sake na hum. So this is sa. Like this, slowly with practice, with uh, keeping this concept in mind that there is some sa. When you realize this concept and you start observing, listening to melodies, then you start slowly start getting that very sa. It's not so much difficult, huh? but uh, till you don't know the concept, it remains rahasya always. Huh? It remains mysterious, but. Once you start understanding that, okay, there is some reference point which we have to realize, then you'll start realizing it. Hmm? Is it only by playing along with singing that you get that? Because no, just no, singing no. doesn't give us that. We just can't figure out what scale we are singing. No, see, uh, <laughs> uh, playing is what that playing, uh, uh, actually when you play harmonium, harmonium uh, is a fixed system. Uh, it cannot become basur. When you sing, you can sing basur. So the harmonium also is, a, it makes you in sur. It keeps okay. you in sur. So if you are, you you know that you are singing in sur, then there is not a problem. Then you can find your sa with just your singing. But why we use instrument? Because instrument, when you are playing instrument, playing some song or someone expert is playing, he's playing it perfectly and it is in very much in sur. So otherwise in whole song, if you, you will keep changing sa. Huh? Like if I sing like this. If I sing Besur, then there is no Sa. I don't know where is Sa. Yeah. But I am singing in Sur. Then I can find it. Okay, where is, where is the reference point? So if you are singing in Sur, you don't need instrument. You can find out your Sa. Okay. Any so, more question about... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because still, when I'm, yeah. I can sing a song, then... It in within the song there is you have to find where exactly I mean, which point it is hitting a sa and how do you yeah. know I, mean, I, I think this is a, the concept is like like I'm I suppose I'm singing or is it Dilmen? I'm just starting from somewhere okay. I don't know where I'm starting okay. yeah okay. I know that yeah this is this is, and I, I find myself out of range oh, yes. Okay, then how do I suppose it is not going up there? But I do I should I start from the high notes, high high portion of the song to see if I'm going there, then I will come down and down. And how you put yourself head in one place? Yeah, see, there are two ways. Suppose you are singing and then you are finding sa, or you take one sa and then you sing with according to that. Suppose I for this song, suppose I took this sa, this one key I pressed. Sa. So now if sa is this for this song, from where it will start? So it starts from pa. Pa. 
और इस दिल में क्या रखा है सा सा इज प्लेइंग आई एम प्लेइंग ओनली सा और इस दिल सो इफ दिस इज द रेफरेंस पॉइंट देन पास और इस दिल सपोज आई चेंज द रेफरेंस पॉइंट सपोज आई टेक दिस रेफरेंस पॉइंट सान और इस दिल में क्या रखा है तेरा ही दर्द छुपा रखा है सो यर कम के रखा सा दिस इज साफ द सॉन्ग Uh, you can take some particular key and you can try to sing on that scale you can try to sing any okay. so you you can have a best scale that you know you yes you, you have to select the be- best scale according to your capacity your voice Suppose, and uh, you as i said yeah mm. also in a song from that yeah yeah Maybe if original song is higher then you can lower your scale yes okay so you can start mm-hmm. from your best skill and sing it and if it is going too low that you cannot reach there then maybe up then, the skill if it is going yes, too high exactly. then down the skill exactly uh, yes. but if so you don't sense. have much range then it becomes difficult if your range only is less then yes. if you make it down then it will go down if you will make higher it will go higher so your range should be little bit good good you have to develop your range through riyaz so that yeah. even if you decrease or increase your scale then the, the whole song you can sing enough. nicely so what do you think what do you think a good range like um uh, uh like mandra sapta uh, yeah yeah i i will tell you whatever is your reference point according to that one one saptak sa to sa and then some notes higher and some notes lower approximately two octaves two saptak this much range at least you should have to sing any song good Uh-huh. range of 2 saptak actually very good range is range of 3 saptak whole mandra saptak madhya saptak and tar saptak this is a maximum capacity of generally a human being uh-huh. voice of human can't go beyond 3 octaves 3 saptak but at least half of the upper saptak and half of the down saptak so approximately 2 saptak if you can develop your range then that can be enough for singing any song good So generally any uh, song you listen it is within this range only in two saptaks not more than that uh, like filmy songs uh, light songs are always within the two saptaks it can't go very low or can't, can't go very high uh, but in classical music they just uh, want to uh, show their range so while elaborating rag they show all three saptaks then they show their riyas that how they have develop their range to sing whole tar saptak down whole uh, mandra saptak down all three saptak like if you listen to some concert of pandit jasraj always in his concert once he was demonstrating this his capacity that he can sing in three saptaks the low from lower sa to upper sa all three saptak range he was showing always because he had done that much riyaz But if you uh, listen to Muhammad Rafi or Lata Mangeshkar, we will not find that because any film song is not having that much range. But maybe they can sing, but we don't find them singing this because in light music that is not much required. Um, but then all great uh, singers of classical music have this capacity of uh, yes, singing. Yes, almost after. all. Yes, yes. Because like, they uh, totally concentrate know. on uh, their uh, ability to sing different combinations and everything. So they develop this thing. They do riyas and they develop this capacity. Okay, like I was uh, listening to Begum uh, Parveen uh, Sultana, who yes, sings, uh, yes. "My God," uh, from yes. extremely low. Yes, he sings very high. Yes, uh, yes. High, low uh, subtak, uh, the mandra subtak, yeah. and and goes very, very high. Right, she right. Has such capacity. Yeah. Oh my God, it's it's exactly. mind blowing. Exactly, exactly. Your observation is correct. So some singers are famous for this. Like I said, Pandit Jasraj was famous for this for showing his ability of uh, showing his range. And same Parveen Sultana, she was also famous yeah. for particularly this thing that she has very good range, lower and higher. 
and, and she was explaining something uh, very uh, interesting, like uh, uh, she starts from such low, uh, low scale and the, 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 the lower she starts, the higher she can she can go eventually in her yes song. this is a yeah this is a naturally human uh, uh, this thing that when you develop your range down automatically automatically develops yeah high, this high. is she was explaining that, like yeah, that. yeah yeah yes. because it, it it's like a um uh how we say that she, she was re, it rebounds you know, the lower you start the upper you can go. yes that, yes in short right, this is what right. she was trying to explain yes yes, yes. this you can understand but, only by experience when we actually do riyas and you develop your lower range then you will feel that your higher notes also keeps becoming easier that's why we have to do riyas to extend range any one side you do riyas other side automatically increases yeah but you need to be a very great singer then <laughs> to be able to do that. No, with uh, some proper guidance. One thing is guidance of a teacher and another thing is your own hard work. How much time you give, then you can develop that. Yeah, definitely. Any question? Yes, Guruji, I got one. And I'm yeah. Ashok, you know, from Mauritius. Yes. And uh, okay. you see, uh, sometimes it's very wow. difficult to differentiate between the notes. I, I mean, I want to say that from a song, you can get the notation. So very often, if, yes. as if you want to start from knee. I mean, how do you differentiate it's a knee or it's a so? Should it be yeah. some practice? You know? Yes, yes. So see, this is, uh, this is called Swargyan. Huh? We call it Swargyan in music. So Swargan means whatever melody you are singing, you understand notes. Suppose I am singing any song, like Chandan Sabadan Chanchal Chitvan Dheere Se Tera Ye Muskana So first I will know that very Sa. So I will Sa. Then this is reference point. Sa. Then how melody goes? There are only 12 notes. Huh? So, so, so now I have to identify which 12 notes this melody is using, which notes this melody is using. So I will find out. So this capacity you can develop. For this, you need to learn classical music huh? so that you get idea of different different combination of notes you when you get to know different ragas then uh, your capacity of perceiving the musical notes becomes higher and then slowly it happens to you that you identify start identifying all 12 notes whatever note is sung you can say that oh, this is that this note like if you you'll tell me any song i will immediately tell you the notation of that song like if I say chupke chupke, chupke chupke raat din. So I can tell you, sa pa sa sa gare sa ma ga ma re ga sa ni. Now when we recite sa re ga ma, so we don't uh, uh, mention that it's komal ga or shudh ga or tivra ma or shudh ma. But I know, like I'm saying, sa pa sa sa gare sa. So I know this ga is komal and re shudh. Sa gare sa. Maga, Shuddha, Marega. So both ga, Kumar and Shuddha are used. So I know everything. Means I, whatever melody I listen, I know all notes. This capacity you can develop. This is very, very important in uh, singing good, understanding music and singing good. So this, this, this is what you have to achieve slowly in music. It, what, there are only 12 notes. And 12 notes used in lower octave and higher octave. So, wherever that note is higher, lower note, and which 12 out of 12 note, which note is that, that you have to understand quickly. With practice, that happens. That Swarnayan you have to develop. Yeah, Guruji, I got another that is, question. I got another yeah. question. I understand that one. And uh, I mean, I've seen the trend now. Many people think when they go on videos, call and everything. I do much of conference uh, calls, so I'm used to it. But 
many people think that going through videos, they can become a singer. I think people are wrong because you do mistakes and if nobody touch your fingers to know how you do it. You've been my guru, so I'm just a beginner. I know how it's going to be. Very often I try to deal with myself, but without a guru, I think nobody can do it. Yeah, see, see, this is your own concerns that how you choose your teacher. Huh? So you have to realize yourself that who is good. And sometimes it is your choice. Sometimes it is your, your understanding of how much you understand. Huh? So this is the, this in the whole world, this thing in any subject, not only in music, but in any subject. This is very uh, amazing thing. Is you don't know who you, who you like and who you'll follow. You have to yourself realize that who is good and who should who I should follow. Yeah, so because that, I got I've got because as I tell you, because as you were talking about Chuke Chuke, I've tried to sing several times because I know the Saregama, everything. So I got the, the notation, but I can yes. tell you with one note everything differs. With one mistake, mm. you can sing the song wrongly. So exactly. This is this is why I say you need somebody to correct you because if you get in the videos, there's nobody tell you you're going wrong. Yes, so if I you tell me if I when I see some videos, I see that many people are sing, uh, teaching very wrongly, many wrong concept, uh, and they themselves don't know anything, but they are teaching very confidently. So that you have to realize yourself that who is good, who is not. There are many good videos also, of course. As as you say in YouTube, if you go, some people are teaching very good, some are not teaching good, but. Everyone has confidence, <laughs> so you don't realize that actually who is good and who is not. Because uh, some people who don't know anything, but they have tremendous confidence. So just by their confidence, you think that they are good. So then you have to realize that just someone is faking his confidence, is good or not. But unfortunately, we don't have many teachers like you in Mauritius to teach people how to do that, because most of the people go wrong. Uh, no, uh, what uh, one more thing that uh, what you want to learn that is also important. Means you, uh, what is your aim ultimately? Like, uh, if your aim is to learn classical, pure classical, then you can go to some guru which is totally in this, which has expertise in this. Or if so, you want to sing Ghazal, then you have to choose guru accordingly. If you want to sing Bollywood, then Bollywood is an, actually you don't find a particular guru guru for teaching you Bollywood singing, but you have to find a guru who is good in classical, but who can show you how to sing Bollywood good like this. So you have to choose a better teacher for you. You have to realize that you have to listen to them and you have to realize that what, how they sing and you like their singing, then you can go to them to learn what they are singing like this. But I can say you I've have to choose a lot from you. I've learned a lot from you and it, I'm proud to have a guru like you. Thank you. Any more question? Anyone has any question? Then one more topic I want to uh, raise. But before that, I will again ask if anyone has any question. Yes, Raghuji. Any topic. Yeah. Yes, uh, how long it takes normally for a beginner to start uh, recognizing the, the notes and sing what? Uh, see, this is a very difficult question because what happens, uh, but this is a, like some something is like God gift. Sometimes you have God gift, but you don't know you have. So when you start learning, then you realize that, okay, I have this very good capacity of understanding notes. Then you grasp very quickly. But sometimes you don't have, and then you keep trying, but you don't have that sensibility of understanding Sur, then no matter how many years you learn, you won't yeah. get that capacity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, okay. this you have to explore and then you have to know. You, you can't fix any such time that, okay, in this much time you will realize. Or after, suppose I teach one student for one month, then maybe I can judge him and I can say that, okay, in six months I will make him understand all notes. Or I, in two years, I'll make him understand. Or in one week, I'll make him understand notes. So this, I can judge a student after I teach him a little bit, I get to know him. Otherwise, okay. uh, just, you can't say like this, that how much time it will take. Yeah. Okay, thank you.
Any other question? Um, okay, so uh, Rahulji, yeah. what about pitch? What about pitch? We have talked about scale, about sound. scale is pitch. Scale, scale is pitch. This pitch oh, means scale. scale. Is pitch. Synonyms yes, yes. Yes, yes. Scale, scale. Yeah, scale means pitch. Okay, thank you. Scale, pitch means the, your reference point, your saw. That is pitch or that is called scale. There is a, the scale uh, word is also used sometimes in Western music. They use word scale for thought. Yesterday I explained about thought. So that is also uh, where they use this word scale. But in general, in our Indian music, when we say scale, we mean pitch only. The reference point, sa. This is scale, or sa. But sometimes, uh, like in uh, Western music, they don't have rag, but they also have some particular notes they choose out of 12 notes. And then they call it scale. Like they call it major scale. So major scale is like singing all Shuddha swars. So when we sing all Shuddha swar, we call it Bilawal Thad. So they call it major scale. So scale okay. is like thought also. Yeah. So that is when a term scale also used like that in Western music. Minor scale, major scale, pentagonic scale, like this, there are scales in, uh, this is all about the Western music. So this scale word is used there also. But in general, when we uh, use this scale word in Indian music, we mean pitch only. So the, the Western music, when they say that, um, uh, a, a sharp minor and D sharp major. But now, what is this major minor and all okay. these things? Uh, yeah, and this, this is a major minor is a altogether very big concept of music, huh? and especially very much used in Western music. So I'll have to explain to it. This is a very important topic, very interesting thing. Huh? So for that, I will explain to you two words, which are we use generally, but we have to understand their meaning very specifically. Hmm. Melody and harmony. So when we generally say melody, so we use melody, anything which is which sounds good, we call it melody. And harmony, so harmony is also in other terms we use, like social harmony or whatever. Harmony means being together nicely. This is called harmony. So how harmony word and melody word is used in music? So, melody is at one time you play or sing only one note. At a one moment, at a particular time, if you are playing only one note, then that is called melody. And at a one time, if you are playing more than two notes, then it is called harmony. So, why it is harmony? Because two or three notes, or four notes, or five notes, you are playing together, but all are in harmony. So they sound good together. So that is called harmony. They are har harmonized with each other. Means when you play some particular notes together and it sounds good, then that is called harmony. And you, you are playing only one note at a time. Then it is melody. Any question regarding melody and harmony? I hope you understood the concept of melody and harmony. Please play. Uh, Rahulji, can you play and show? Okay. Sure. So like, suppose, like, uh, I'll, uh, the best example can be given of melody singing. You can't sing two notes together at a time through your throat. Any human being cannot do that. Huh? In general, I was seeing one video on YouTube where, where, where one lady was trying that, singing two notes together, but don't know how it was. But in general, we can realize that we can't sing two notes together. At a one time, we can sing only one note. So with, with our throat, we can sing only melody. We cannot sing harmony. So if you want to produce harmony, we need many people. So one, one person is singing something else, another is singing something else, oh. and both together sounding good, then this is called harmony. But only one person is singing, then that is melody. So I'm, I'm playing harmonium. So I'm at a one time, I'm playing only one note. So, at a time, I am playing only one note, that is melody. Now, I will play harmony. So, I will play some notes together, then it will sound good.
you can see many notes are being played together but it's sounding good so this is harmony so the word chord comes from this chord means chord so chord is a some notes play played together which are in accord as if they are in chord which are not discord like suppose i am playing sa shuddha ga and pa and i am playing sa komal ga and pa these three, two notes uh, three notes i played together sa shuddha ga and pa sa komal ga and pa so minimum three notes or sometimes even with two notes we can call it chord but generally with three notes you are playing three notes together then it is called chords but when it is called chord that these three notes when you play together it sounds good so when you play these three notes together sa ga and pa then it is called major chord and when you play sa komal ga and pa together then it is called minor chord so these are two very main chords which are used in music major chord and minor chord so suppose a scale when you uh, say about scale or uh, of any song so sometimes scale is only one reference note or it can be a reference chord so when you uh, want to check the reference chord instead of reference only one note then you use this term that the, suppose i say that in uh, i i sing ik pyar ka nagma hai in d sharp major scale so major when i say major means three notes i will use as my reference point sa ga and pa not only sa one reference point sa is always there but i am taking three reference points when i start the song the first thing i will play will be these three notes together which is a what chord it can be a major chord or it can be a minor chord so when when or someone asks you what is in which scale you are singing so you can either say only one one note as a scale that i am sing my sa will be d my reference point is sa but if you want to say my reference point in terms of chord then you will say my scale is d major or d sharp major or c sharp major or whatever or minor in terms of three notes playing together so basically chord means three notes playing together so yeah chupke chupke is not major it is minor chord because it it uses majorly it uses komal ga so the basic chord will be sa komal ga and pa that's why chupke chupke is considered a song of minor scale so whatever scale suppose i am singing it the d as my sa then it, the scale will be d minor or if i am singing d sharp it will be d sharp minor so the major minor is only have sa ga pa or can that be only Dani, difference of ga difference is only of ga shuddha ga and komal ga if it is shuddha ga it is major right. if it is komal ga it is minor sa and pa are always there okay so how about the, the ni and dha and all these things doesn't play any role there no no the other it, notes uh, yes that that are not why, considered why, for uh, a, because uh, for a first uh, Uh, sa is the main thing then what happens uh, see when we say about harmony so suppose we have one particular note sa then what is the best harmonizing note with sa the best harmonizing note with sa is pa then what is the second best note which harmonize with sa and pa that is shuddha ga and what is the next best note which harmonizes with sa and pa that is komal ga so like this this becomes the first uh, notes which are very harmonious together where if you will play sa pa and dha it won't sound very harmonious if you play oh. sa pa and ni it will not sound harmonious so sa, uh, with sa and pa mm -hmm. which note is most harmonious then first is ga then second is komal ga okay so is so it the same in western music this is the concept of western music only oh, in our film music we uh, the music director started using this concept in indian music they took all western concepts in our music and they started means our film music 
when it started previously it was very like indian music then slowly they started uh, taking all this concept of harmony and all chords and then whatever song you film song you listen in the background harmony is playing means many notes are playing together which are in harmony with each other the singer is singing melody and in the background is harmony i have a question so yeah. if um, if you are saying that only the ga sa sa ga pa gives you the harmony of major or minor and i am singing yes. a song with the best rag best song which does not yes. have ga in there then yeah. what so, do you do so uh, you see the complications keep increasing then many question keep arising so then the next chord is called suspended chord that is sa re pa then uh, this is that is called second suspended then there are many names these are two basic names major chord and minor chord Achha. but there are many types of chords acha the best chord i i would say the best chord is major chord sa ga pa two three these three notes are very beautiful together Achha. second base is sa komal ga and pa then sir there are some other notes which also has little bit less or more uh, good when they are play uh, played together so you can play sa re and pa so you mm. see how they sound together then sa ma and pa mm. so these have different names of chord second suspended fourth suspended then sixth seventh major seventh minor seventh there are name, many types of chords yeah i think in the in the so, piano yeah. class so Uh, 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 they play more than three notes together. Mm. Then there are different no- names of different chords. Different chords, okay. So different chords means different notes being played together. Mm-hmm. So for for singing sing a song uh, in some rag, and if we know that it is using suddha and komal ni, then we have to find a chord that uses that. no okay. see ni does uh, ni doesn't matter we have to first think about ga what what ga it is using komal or shuddha but if it is not using a ga then what then it, then you you uh, choose re and ma huh? okay within so, sa and pa you will choose within sa and pa within sa and pa you can yeah. say re and ma re and ma yeah. okay it can be sa the... re pa it so, can be sa ma pa mm mm-hmm. so if it is they don't use ga or re or ma then can you go to dha and ni but such song is not possible it's very difficult to <laughs> find song which doesn't have ga which doesn't have re which doesn't have ma okay. then nothing remains <laughs> so okay. in the, from between sa and pa you will get either shuddha ga or komal ga or otherwise you will get re or ma okay but theoretically i'm i'm speaking i'm sure that they have different chords and think the combination of all these right different notes yeah. um, melody is not possible without taking the third note between sa and pa you I you will get always get one note between sa and pa in any melody okay all right thank you any more question Uh, rahul ji i've heard that minor chords make a song sound sad so mostly sad right. songs have minor chords versus major yes now now see all all notes uh, when you play some note that has a feeling uh, it is not just a melody what happens that our human mind is such that when we listen to something suppose we see some picture then also we get some feeling so always all arts art forms are such that it is it, they are meant for feelings i will explain one concept uh, concept of two types of art one is useful art and one is fine art the useful art means like carpentry or pottery these are useful arts now you make something out of it and then you use that thing but fine arts fine arts are such arts which are meant only for re, uh, uh, entertainment of mind or Uh, to create some emotions in you just to enjoy that emotions so like poetry or uh, 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 music dance these are such things nothing is being created just you are watching it or you are listening to it and you are getting a feeling so what i mean to say that this whatever note you play you get some feeling so 
now you have to slowly realize that what feeling you are getting with listening to what note this can be different to different people in general we can say that when you was, uh, listen to shuddha ga you feel little happy and when you listen to komal ga means the major chord is little happier chord and minor chord is little sad chord but if if you you see uh, many creations are done this is very basic feeling but many happy song can be made in minor scale or very very any sad song also can be made in major scale so that is a creativity which any composer keep doing but the, the basic uh, you can say that okay in general if you say major chord is happy and minor chord is little sad i have so a question is, here yeah you know, uh i guess i was watching a tutorial yesterday and the song happens to have all should the swara okay and uh, yeah. then uh, the teacher said that first you hit these three notes which is sagapa right uh, which uh, i think with uh, so you are in sync with that right so and what is the purpose of that is that to set your uh, soar or what because i can straight away go to the song but then usually they say start with these three notes together so yeah why see, do you do that yeah now you see uh, as i said different notes you play it has different feeling similarly when if you play a melody it has different feeling and you play some notes together it has different feeling so what happens generally we can say that when you play harmony some notes together it gives depth to the melody when some melody is being played and be, behind that some notes are being uh, played together with that melody which are in harmony with that note so it it gives depth to that melody now this this i can practically explain to you like again i will take uh, may, oh, let, okay let me take some other song rim jhim gire saavan sulag sulag jaye man bhige aaj is mausam mein lagi kaisi hai lagan rim jhim gire saavan now this was pure melody means whatever i am singing same notes i am playing in harmonium so it is like melody now i'll sing with chords यू डिड नॉट यूज डिफरेंट स्वर आज पर जस्ट Yeah, I did not didn't play melody. I just played okay, harmony. Okay, got it. Supports got it. the melody. Yeah, because I, I have chords. heard uh, I have heard many classical singers who don't know how to play harmonium. Okay, unfortunately, and exactly. they use this exactly. technique. You know. Yes, yes. So, so see, okay. this is this uh, these are totally different learnings. Means you learn classical in classical. There is in especially in pure Indian music, there is no concept of harmony or chords. Huh? Only one concept, like we. always play tanpura on which sa and pa are always playing so suppose you are singing ga then automatically you will get three notes because sa and pa are always already playing so if you are singing re ga ma then always sa and pa are there to support it to in support. this way there is some kind of harmony in indian music but west in western music uh, harmony is goes with the note it doesn't remain steady like sa and pa only two notes are playing as harmony and you keep you sing any other notes but with every note chord changes so this concept is a totally of western music so uh, some people don't have any knowledge of western music or chords so they don't know about this so they can't play they only know the melody part because indian music is mainly based on melody and western music is very much based on harmony so you you sing that uh, you say that uh, western music they like to sing in groups big big groups and many many people playing different instruments together they like to create such music 
while in our indian mentality we like to listen to one nice melody either it is by on instrument or by singer we enjoy that so that creates different feeling that has different feeling so it is like that that uh, different people have different knowledge means uh, like uh, we say our music directors film music directors they had this knowledge of both the things indian melody and western harmony they combined it and they gave very nice nice pieces of music means very good good songs with very good background music and all this they gave but classical singer just sings his rag he doesn't know about all these things because he has not explored that so uh, there is much to explore in life whatever you want to explore you can explore so narav ji it's um 11:31 so it's pretty yeah. much we are to the, in the at the end of our the final session here okay. and i am sure that everybody really really enjoyed and uh, this session and learned so much more now they know little obviously more than what they knew when they came here so yes, I, i really appreciate appreciate your sharing your knowledge and um uh, nilakshi who i thank you so much nilakshi joining with me and actually i join with them that's a bigger organization it's a non profit organization and they do a lot of um, this classical is our this goal of this organization so she will end this program and i will send the recording back to um, everybody and you can share that and have that yeah. i i, I would request to. that if if possible if you put both this session on youtube because that that yeah. is easier we will because if you want to send someone yeah. then file size is very big so you can't send but if you put on youtube anyone can go to youtube and see that Yes, yes. Right now, what I will do, I'm not sending. I'm just sharing the cloud recording, and yes, you can go over and see that. Yeah, and and download that, and I will yes. see. I can I can put that in yes. the YouTube. Um, yes. Maybe edit that and get out all these um, yes. things and because uh, you know this uh, sharing of okay. um, Zoom video, it will go away after some days. It won't remain uh, there. Yeah, yes, we have to I, download within couple of days. Yes. you have yes, done a couple of days uh, you have to download i i i will remove them yes right right that's yes. true so everybody you want to keep it download to your device and um and i will see if we can get that in the in a youtube okay yes. because uh, you. if you share share that link i can just see i cannot download only you no. can download yes uh, you cannot download No, no. Yeah. you will you, you will have down. to share as only a host. You will have person, to share the link. Yes, the host who have recorded it only you can download. Yes, I do. I do can, download yeah. them. If you I share with us, we can and... see, but we can't download. I see. Okay, okay. I didn't know that. Okay. All right. So, thank you so much. And, okay, I'll uh, say that. Uh, yes, anyone wants to say. Right, and I am going to stop here. You whatever you say, and then Nilakshi, then we'll end. Right. Yeah, Nilakshi ji, are saying something? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say a big thank you to you, Rahul ji. Uh, two days a of uh, short sessions, but I think uh, so many good nuggets of information, and uh, you know, clarifying uh, you know questions from people who are learning or are music enthusiasts. So I think this has been a very unique experience for a lot of us. Uh, truly, truly uh, thankful for your time and uh, the knowledge that you have shared with us. And thank, uh, you. thank you for the participants also. Um, you know, I as you can also them, thank everyone is, who joined. Yeah, it's it's always been our endeavor to bring new uh, things uh, to you know the music enthusiasts. So, if you like the session, please do share your feedback. We'll try and do our best to do more of these. With that, I just want to thank everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So, uh, thank whatever I had thought, uh, Miss C, this is only only three hours. I could uh, took this much topics. There are many more topics which I had thought to uh, tell, but as questions keep coming, so many topics are still remaining. So, actually, it's endless thing, Miss. There are correct. If you in any any one topic, you can go much deeper, and you can uh, do uh, such sessions on each topic. You can do such sessions. I think I will. Yeah, that... I will do that. Uh, Gazal, we can do that one. I mean, I I think yeah. we can do one yeah. of the Gazal ones. 
Sure. Right. Yeah, we'll get if we get feedback, then we can prioritize which topics to yeah. to focus on first. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Have a great rest of Thank the you. weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you for joining. Everyone. Thanks, Anuji Nilakshi ji, for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I am uh, ending this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.